Are we ready? I'm not surprised right. at that. Everything's on and going? Yep. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and call the select board to order at 7 o'clock. I will call trustees to order at 7 o'clock. Right. Okay, what's up, first on our agenda? First up, we have uh, review and select candidates for field purchases. Uh -huh. uh, well, before we actually, before we do that, sorry. Are there any additions or adjustments to the agenda? Yes. Yes. You're um, consistent. In this, in this would be this would by necessity be for consideration by the village also. Um, we don't have to decide this tonight, but the historical society was donated a weather vane, which came out of the original town hall building. Um, so it's very historic. Um, it was in really bad shape. I have restored it, and it's now basically ready to be displayed. The Historical Society voted or discussed it today, and they would be interested in displaying it in the foyer of this building. Um, so again, it's not something that has to be decided tonight, but I thought I'd bring it up since both boards are here. Okay. I'll discuss it after the other stuff. Uh, okay, any other additions? You want to bring our response up? Well, this we we're waiting. We our attorney has uh, the the uh, issue of the uh, river road walk drainage and is working on it and plans to have it to you guys by the I think it's the fifteenth. And we but okay. we haven't heard from him. I think like they kind of like to do things at the last minute. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> used to <laughs> so, uh, but we will be getting it. Awesome. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. Any other additions? Any public comments? Okay. Uh, let's review and select candidates for fuel purchase. So, All right. so and I've received one bid in writing from Fred Dennett. Uh, I also spoke to Barrasso and Coors, who are our current suppliers for fuel oil, diesel, and propane. They're interested in continuing, um, but they didn't submit anything in writing. Uh, but they verbally, you know, I gave them the bid, they just expressed their interest in continuing to, to work with them. But we do have Fred's here in front of us. Uh, who can supply propane, fuel oil, and diesel. Mark, why why did these people that are want our business not submit a bid? They just want us to continue doing business with them if, on their terms. I, I can't really speak to why they did or didn't. They were given the bid at the same time that everyone else was. And did they contact you and tell you, oh yeah, we'd like to continue selling your product? Yes, and, and uh, when I when I gave them the bid document and spoke to them, they indicated they would like to continue. But not with enough energy to actually submit a bid. Do we know what <clears throat> the current suppliers are doing? Are they doing a rack plus price? A uh, rack plus price. Yes. And do we know what the plus is? Yeah. Rosemary does. Yeah. Do you know what the rack plus price is for the pricing for, for Brasso and Course? Or do you just get a bill that says, yeah, I just get a bill? <clears throat> maybe, maybe not. What do I know? Or Brasso or heating or feeling like, oh. four plus around that. Seriously, for for number two fuel oil or for diesel fuel? For I think it's the same for oil. Yeah. Is that wood? Is there any edge in? Service or reliability amongst those three. I'm not really familiar with. I'm not really familiar with Fred's. We've been perfectly happy with Barrasso and, and Coors. Um, but I don't really have any incidents to report. 
Um, well, can we just clarify happy with, let's not say happy with, Brasso delivers consistently, is what we should say. Yes. <laughs> Do the others not? They have, they won't use Brasso. Say that again? They use Brasso and that course, friends is well, this new, but your question I is: know. Does other do other folks have experience where any other supplier is not delivering? Right. I mean, I've never known a company not to deliver when you want them to, so oh, that sure. shouldn't be a, an issue. Well, I'm not aware of any any issue with any of the people under consideration. Go ahead, Evan. When you say when you want them to, uh, I mean bigger fuel suppliers just have a day. That they're in the town right if you're outside of that day you are paying so if we have anywhere that can't make it to the next week for some reason we could be facing extra charges but that's if it's not planned the question is about re reliability right. and the response i think from everyone that i'm hearing is that we don't know of any reliability issues from any of the vendors we're talking about is that a fair statement yeah i got you So would it be reasonable or should we, we just go back to the other two and say, we were about to make a decision, but we really need to have something in writing. And if, if we don't get it to us in, in a couple of days, we're going to assume that you're not really that interested. I think we should have done that before tonight. I, yeah, I don't. Okay. I, if, if this had a fixed date. If it did. the request for proposal had a fixed date on it, I think the only way that we could consider another bid would be to reject this bid and then take into consideration whether we want to continue with the current situation or not. So just to let Eric finish his thought, did you have more that you wanted to add? No. I, the only thing I, for me that would be interesting to know is it sounds like uh, heating fuel is about 30 cents a gallon or so more expensive for their current supplier. How does it match up with the propane and with the proposal from Fred that 215 and, and whatever the uh, offer would be? Do you know off the top of your head, Rosemary, what the propane cost is? Or the uh, diesel? I believe either one number two fuel or just about the same. Well, the same. Comes out the same. No. I mean, that 215 on propane is rather good. <laughs> it's what? That's a dollar cheaper than I'm paying. I've been locked in the same company for 30 years. So. Seems really seems good. Seems like a good product. Yeah. And this is why I brought up to Evan. We had a conversation a little while back about possibly looking into having the rest of the oil furnaces checked via switched over to propane. Because we all know fossil fuels just been hitting the line, there's no stopping us. And the BTUs are comparable, and you're talking half the cost. It depends on the, it depends yeah, because the market for propane and the market for oil are different. And from my understanding, I don't use propane, but my understanding is that propane, it can, the ebb and flow of the two markets can be different. Propane um, hasn't fluctuated anywhere near fuel oil the last 30 years. Yeah. 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 Okay. It has stayed within a dollar. I do want to caution. Nobody has brought up the potential of a liquid damage fee if we accept this contract. Where we could potentially be paying a dollar fifty per undelivered contract gallon if we do not use at least eighty percent, that could be pretty expensive. If we actually saved fuel and did the right thing, <laughs> then, we could pay for what we don't get. But they've actually only put in the amount of gallons in the propane. Okay, we need to know in that case what our annual propane usage is. That's only if we went on a rack plus. Right. But in order to have an informed decision, we would need to know what our annual propane, propane usage is. 
Propan I'm talking about propane specifically. No, actually, for each of them, for each one of them, we need to understand. It doesn't seem to be a requirement for the uh, fuel oil. Please, no it is. Where? Please no. Please no. In order to, for us to fix it, it's it's this big bulb in here. The language is there, but an amount that we're agreeing yeah. to is there's no amount required. Oh, 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 the 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 total balance. And the same is true of the offer. And and for all we know, the other two companies might have similar. But they base no. they base their RFP on your numbers, right? They did. So I think we'd have a hard time arguing that. That we would fall twenty percent short. Yeah. Propane right now is who? Of course. And um, did we get the actual usages from course? I'd want to double check on that. Did we find out whether or not course owns any of the tanks, particularly the underground tanks? Uh, this one out here, I think was, I don't think we owned that one. I think we did own the one at the water and water, wastewater plant. Which is a village asset. And if we don't own it, then of course could come along and say, we're gonna take the tank out and you gotta buy your own tank. I did not, I don't know if we own the tank. Sir. Okay, so we could do that number of things. We could separate these contracts out by type of fuel. We wanted to proceed. We could not proceed right now and pay a known higher rate because we know we're paying higher rates with what we have right now. Yeah. You said what we were paying for fuel oil. What are we paying for propane right now? Yeah. So it's not, not that we're paying a known higher rate. We don't know the thing what we're that paying. I'm confident in for sure is that we have a lot more um, fuel oil invoices that we pay for a much higher amount than we do for propane. Agreed, especially in the summer. It is double the pricing. Which is kind of why I was suggesting we might want to split these contracts out. Um, was the bit. was the RFP structured in a way that that can happen, or is it a? It, it was, I was believe it. that it was yeah. because we envisioned possibly one company bidding on only one fuel source. Right, right. And so that I, I would say that our, our RFP was structured in a way that we can pick and choose fuel sources from different uh, suppliers. Uh, yes. I would be comfortable tonight going with Fred. The only caution I guess I would have is not knowing the real tanks or not for the propane and whether uh, is there going to be any cost associated with that. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. 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 I've, I've switched suppliers and you know, previous position and you work that out ahead of time with the person with the, the outfit you're going to and get their uh get their tank on site before the other outfit comes and retrieves theirs and they have to give you credit for what's in that tank. Yes. There's I mean I can interject if you don't mind. Um just because I dealt with this before typically when you have an underground uh propane tank and you go to a different supplier that supplier will provide another tank to the other company in place of that. If your underground paint passes the end of that same it's not leaking rusty, um, there is sometimes a small fee, so you don't have to go and dig the tank up and, and uh, replace it. So there's, you know, if the tank passes inspection, the company swap tanks, they do it all the time. But if it doesn't pass, then you're going to have to replace it one way or the other anyway. Did you have something, Mark? Um, 
I'll second what Eric said. I'm not sure. The one is pointing Good out. Eric or me? <laughs> <laughs> Eric with a K or a C? I'm going to second, I'm second both of you. Yeah. I, re I remember being involved in legislation around propane recovery, and they they have 30 days to give you money or something, mm -hmm. or they get a substantial fine. You know? So that that's, the, and I do also think Marla was right there. Here. It's been my experience that they'll, they'll swap tanks with each other, but they will inspect them and they will um, typically inspect your system mm -hmm. and charge you for it because mm -hmm. they want to know that everything's up to code before they fill it up with code. But the, the bad Eric, I'm with him. I feel yeah. like if the other companies... <laughs> we all love your doctor. <laughs> if the other companies just sort of said, oh, you know, we don't want to give a bid. I mean, we're not asking for something egregious. We're saying, what's your price above rack? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You so know, and and that that still floats, that still moves. It isn't like we're saying we want three dollars a gallon. Mm -hmm. And they and these are people that have supplied us with this for years and they're not willing to step up. I say bad Eric is with is right. I'd go with Brad. My only... suggesting for all three contracts or yep. just one. Yep. Well, no, so I, was I would have a problem. I think it's easier to tell people. My only concern is with the propane because we do have a specified number of gallons. I would like confirmation of what our actual used number of gallons are for a calendar year. Take like a calendar year, I don't care. But I want to make sure that we're not significantly mm -hmm. Under that twelve thousand gallons, because I don't want to pay the extra fee, which may end up being more than what we pay now. Well, can't we get that from our last meeting where we were discussing the proposal, and uh, it states that diesel for the year was thirty six thousand three hundred eighty three, heating oil was twenty seven thousand eight thirty four. And then propane uh, for different buildings were it wasn't it's not added up. But can't we use those numbers? We have to use one of the One second. My only hesitation is that I would like to know from our supplier what those gallons are because those are numbers that we calculated based on what we have. I would like the supplier to tell us where the gallons used for. We found some errors in that that uh, dollar amounts and volume amounts were mixed up in a couple places. So we fixed that to the best of my knowledge, but it would still be, uh, we still want to get those numbers from the supplier. Can we vote a tentative approval on the threads contract based on a couple contingencies that we're going to check out? Mm -hmm. And so one, one other question. The Fred's they don't have any gallons listed on the fuel oil or the no road fuel. So that means there's no restriction. We can buy as much as we need and that's it. Um they talk about it a little bit in this email, I think. Um, and they say that the number of gallons wasn't specified, so they're subject to associated tax. Uh, I was more in reference to their dollar fifty charge for unused amounts. Right. Right. So if they don't have any listed amount on there, we're not set to have to purchase like we would be the propane twelve thousand gallons. I, that way. If I can, I expect that they would want to set a number before they agree to it. But if we but they just send us a proposal to agree to without a number on it. Yep. So if we're going to pick in that against Jack F. Chorus, and we pick in that, like they didn't provide the same number. So I'm getting that. Yeah, I, mean, I think that's fair. I mean, I'm just, by the number of 12,000 gallons, it seems like a lot of propane. Well, the sewer plate uses a lot. The sewer plate yeah, uses well, a lot. I know, I know most of that was on us, but I just still didn't, that number didn't. Well, this work. building uses a lot, too. Yeah. Because the, the air conditioning is also the fire department also. I have a question. Fire department's oh, fuel. Well. 
better. It seems that page two and page three are just two different contracts for the same thing. But number two and offer of these are the same exact words. They're the they're what? Same product. Different offer of these should be huh? different color. No, no, <laughs> offer is style just like number two. Right. The same color. Yeah, it's both done. Yeah. On road diesel is not yeah. done. Jason? We don't have any on the table. Right. All off road. Right. Right. And it's, it's the same exact thing as number two. Yeah. And they come across what fills up our truck tank and the eating tank have a good same thing on road. So your question would be why why okay, so is there a wrap price on one and a fixed price on the other? Yeah. Maybe there are two different options. There might be two options. Um the, yeah, I'm glad you asked too. You got me looking at this again. So the second option where it says number number two fuel oil it does have a five hundred gallon minimum. We easily surpass that. Mm -hmm. Um so there is actually a minimum specified on that one. But one one assumes you you in the RFP you had a number of gallons yeah. in which they were supposed to bid on, so I would suspect that if we didn't at least meet the minimum of what was in the RFP, they would probably try and apply the dollar fifty liquid damage against us. What was our RFP for propane? I'm sorry, I don't have that. In front of me, and that it's, should be easy to find. Yep, our, our, our fees. It seems like the first one is just a fixed price, and the second one is a fluctuating price with a thirty percent rate. Mm -hmm. Right, and it should be the same. Thank you. <clears throat> there might be an option for us you know, if, if we want to hedge our bets that the price goes down. Well, and that's what Brasso currently does is they do a, a fixed fee above their rack price the day that they purchase it. But we don't know what that is. I mean, it would be useful to know what that rack price is. I mean, it, it could be that that four fifty nine a gallon was a particularly bad day um, for the rack price. Mm -hmm. Would the rack price change every time, or would it be? Oh, yeah, that's right. Yes, it's like, it's yes. It's like the gas station. Every time they pick up fuel, they they're paying so much for the fuel they're picking up. They guarantee us a price of a fixed fee above their their rack price. That's it. Just it's flipping the coin. You're either saving money over what it is right now, and it might go up, and you're saving even more money, or you know, mid. Next summer, it drops out two dollars, and we're spending more money on things. Exactly. Are we ready to uh, act on this? Have we lowered this as much as we're going to? Or are we ready not to act? Do we need more information in order to act. What are the What are the thoughts? When's our next joint meeting? <laughs> <laughs> My only concern is that they have no amount of gallons that we need to use compared to dollar fifty for not using them. For the I think that is the amount. That one for the which one can for the middle the of the amount. So for the I understand the fuel oil one or for the rack price one. Um, the middle one for fuel. fuel. Okay, fuel. that one does have a minimum gallon. I just found it's right here, right below the court contract. It's up top. Yeah, right below. It's a five hundred oh. gallon minimum. But they're not going to use that point again. They're going to use the oh, what was in the RFP. Yep. I'm just looking. They also have a 500 gallon minimum on the propane. It's not 12,000 gallons. They didn't write it in, so they can't hold us to it. That's that's all I'm getting at. Is that they wrote it in for the propane and have the same exact printing on both pages. That's fair. They don't have it written in there. Are they going to go by what Brian submitted, which is our standard use of fuel? I don't see that again. Or are they just going to stick with fuel to 422 gallons and that's the way it is? If we want to act, we could put a contingent on them sticking regardless of the number of gallons. I would be fine with that as long as we could overflow that kind of parameter on it. Sure. Mm -hmm. 
Well, I, I'm kind of with Eric on the on the whole issue of number two versus uh, off road. Uh, if we okay, fair. If we think of it in terms of we need to clarify this, I understand. But if we think of it in terms of fixed fixed price versus adjustable price to the rack on top, do you have a preference? Do you? What are your thoughts on that? I think it's a real crapshoot. Um, you know the the the, the okay, current, not philosophical, but the, the current, the, I'm, <laughs> let me let me finish the yeah. thought. The, the 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 there is a certain attraction to the idea of having a fixed price, but I don't have a crystal ball. I don't know if the you know price of fuel oil is going to go down two dollars a gallon in the, over the course of the next year or not. Um, on the other hand, the above rack price, the 30 cents above rack price seems a little pricey to me. I think that's considerably more than what our current thing with Brasso's is, and I can't remember what that was. And that was a long time ago. But we need to know that. I mean, I we do like, need to know. Like I'm making here. I don't know how much yeah. we burn, how much we pay. So I think we really have two choices. We can either approve these contracts, we can reject this contract or, or this debt, and open it back up to a bid um, and revisit the question or do you have a preference on where we go it's okay if the answer is no uh, the answer is no i don't have a preference i'll act on what everybody wants to motion okay if they want to do you want to do something with this or would you like more information we're getting into the middle of them right now mm -hmm. i almost think we have to act tonight but maybe the act would be not taking an action and status quo staying with our current providers. It's just, there are some unanswered questions with what we got. But we don't even know what our current providers are charging us. Right. But I mean, I just, it was status quo. So you don't want to make a decision either? Oh, well. I'm 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 with bad Eric that I just feel like they had the decency to submit a response. And you know, I I will argue that um I like over, a percent over rack versus fixed price because I said to you, guarantee me what I can buy fuel from you next year, guess what you're gonna do? You're going to give me a high price. You're going, to give a high price. You're going to give me a high price. That people are not dumb. Fuel people don't lose very much money. Right. So I like the over rack, but I don't even know what we're paying over rack right now for Brasso's. If we knew that, that might give me a sense too. But I mean, somebody's writing those checks. I mean, we shouldn't know what the contract is. At Fair least enough. I feel like if I'm okay. going to make that decision. Okay. Generally, I like over rack and I like these people at least they weren't arrogant. Yeah, okay. Um do you have anything to add to what anyone else was thinking? I'm gonna make the most simple answer to your question. Thanks. I want more information. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> I mean, so it sounds like our board that wants more like information. <laughs> Can we move this later on? And I <laughs> after some of this, I think the girls went down I agree and looked for some of that information yeah, for us. I yes, thank you. you. Yep. Yeah. Okay. We'll circle back to if you have any clarifying information. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Next up, memorandum of understanding for jointly owned buildings. All right. No. So uh I tried to make the updates that we had requested. We had some concerns about. <laughs> I think that's you know uh, what major changes might entail and what was appropriate. Um, so I tried to do that. The started on the first page of the the MOU. I added a definition section, uh, which defines maintenance and improvement as any work done to the building that does not alter its use or result in a known reduction in value. Uh, adding that known reduction in value to try and address some of the concerns we had about, you know, some of the scenarios that we came up with. Uh, and define use as the purpose for which the building is dedicated to at the time of signing this agreement. 
the uh, phrasing there is a little bit awkward, but I think it, we wanted, we were concerned about that use and about changes of use. Uh, so I, I added that. Then we get into, let's see, the statement of agreement. Um, the first paragraph here is new. The town and village agree that actions would require the demolition or substantial change in use or value for any jointly owned building will require the consent of both the town and village. Then we get into the division of buildings and here the only change is adding and use uh, to village garage and town garage. I'm, so that's my attempt to address all of the, the concerns from the the last discussion we had. I think it addresses what my concerns were. The last time they brought fuel oil, I mean, this is the result November 3rd, it's 547. 547. It, but it doesn't break it down as to what the percent of the. This is just. This, and, but that's just what we paid. It's we just know. the bill. We don't know what the rack price was. No. Yeah. Does somebody know the rack price on what the top of their head? So if we want to fix them out, we do pretty good based on that bill. Based on that bill. Brasso used to get their fuel out of Montreal, which was a different hub. Mm -hmm. Everybody else usually got it out of Boston or New right. York. I think we need. I think we need to stay focused. We can come back to that. Yeah, I just did a quick scan. Even the crude oil per barrel futures rate looks pretty steady for the next year and a half. Thank you. We can come back to that item. Right. We're on the MOU right now. We can stay on the MOU. All right. Good uh, are there any questions or comments on the MOU? I think it's a great job. So where you, you're defining use. Yep. So say the town decides to turn their garage into a store. That means you need permission from the village. Yes. To no longer use it as a garage. Uh, we get in and say that we have the line here, the town and village agree that any actions would require the demolition or substantial change in use or any value for jointly owned buildings uh, will require both the consent of the town and village. So yeah, if we were to make a, we can argue about what substantial means. I think changing the store or changing the garage into a store is pretty clearly substantial. Um, you know, if, if, you know, right now we use the part of the, it's a cold storage, so it's a jointly owned building anyway, but you know, let's say we wanted to dedicate a little bit of space in our building or the village wanted to dedicate a little bit of the space in their building for a different purpose than it's currently dedicated. Then we started getting into a gray area of, is that a substantial change in use or not? But yeah, a total so, new purpose. So maybe substantial ought to be removed and it just ought to be current use because your substantial and my substantial would be greatly different. Yep. So that's just gonna create an argument down the road. Yeah, where I, if it's current use, it is what it is. And if you're going to change it, then it would have to be very far. <laughs> that really ties you in now. Ooh. Substantial, in my mind, means substantial. That's in your current, current means right the way it is. And if we decide to make any minor change, then we've got to deal with each other, which seems... You would also was substantial because your substantial may be greatly different than mine. So we can define subjective. substantial. We could, we want. We could make some, it, I mean, that's a legal term. We should be able to figure out substantial. I'm just mm -hmm. saying that it would be a hang in the spot. To Ken's point, um, 
you can make a bunch of minor changes of use over a duration of time that completely changes the use of a building when you never bid off a substantial use at one time. So where do you draw a lot? Square footage? Percent. Yeah, I agree. But if we changed a little bit this percent right. this year and 10% next year and 10% next year. Even uh, current use could be uh, like if we currently have three tandems in our garage. We decide to go with two tandems. Is that a change of use? No, because you're still using it for all. But it's current. It's currently a garage. So if you change it from a garage, then that would be a change. You know, if we change the floor, like we if we had them running just on what Eric suggested, if we suddenly had one less vehicle, that would I wouldn't call it a substantial use, but it would alter the function in the building. And if our definition is just any change in use requires both floors. If you're calling it the town garage, it doesn't matter if there's any vehicles in it or one, it's still the garage. Well, I don't understand how one vehicle has to change the use. I, I just want to offer another comment on this if I can. I think it's impossible for us to write a document that's going to perfectly cover every possible scenario. We have to have some faith that everybody here is is acting in good faith. Um, we're not lawyers, and I don't think we want to hire lawyers to write this. So I think we should expect it to be a little bit imperfect. But adding or removing substantial, I think it's a, I'm, you know, whatever the board's decide. Well, okay, rather than speculating no. again about whether or not we would want a legal, written, legally written document, I guess that's a question, right? So, you know, would the trustees want a legally written document? Would the our the select board want a legally written document? We can do a quick temperature check. Let's do it. Would you be interested in a legally written document? When you say legally written, do you mean a document that's subject to legal review that we draft and have somebody review? Uh, or ask for them to write it if we consider this our draft. I'd be a lot more inclined to have legal review rather than ask for an attorney to draft the legal documents. So not a legal document, but a document with legal review. Okay. Same. You're on MP so with the district the way it's written. But do you want do you want legal review? I don't want legal review. You do not want legal review. Okay. I don't want legal review. You don't want legal review either. That would be you. Our lawyers, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and they're the ones that would win. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, the thing is that I, I guess I don't want legal review on the document. I would like a, a probably an understanding. I think substantial use matters. I think just use is too. It doesn't give either of us any flexibility. And I think that's not fair for either of us, frankly. Um, and it, I think actually having a very firm use period puts us at risk of more conflict rather than less, just completely being honest about it. Um, so I guess I'd like to understand whether substantial use is something that is understood when you have agreements, Eric. It may get to some of the heart, or it may just put more gasoline on. <laughs> it's currently written the statement of agreement the town and village agree that actions which require demolition or substantial change in use or value, yada, yada, yada. Then, if you jump ahead to, so if we took out substantial, it would be just 
or change in use. Then we jump ahead to the town garage section. It's just to be clear, it would be change of use or value. Yeah, change yeah. of value, uh, change of in use or value. We jump ahead to the town garage section. The town will be 100% responsible for the maintenance and improvement of town garage on building maintenance improvements. And use will only require the affirmative action of the town of select board. So we're not consistent. We need, we need to we, apply it to all the buildings, yeah. that substantial word, or take it out. Maybe. We took out substantial, <clears throat> then we have a conflict in one area of any change of use and an authorization for a change of use. I think the way it reads now, the town or the village within, within their respective buildings can have a change of use as long as it doesn't fall under this clause of a substantial change of use. So if you wanted to change it from your village garage from electric centric building to a water centric building, that probably would not constitute a substantial change of use. It's just you're changing the use of the building within the parameters of yeah. Still one of our utilities. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So essentially, each of those individual buildings that say and use will only require the affirmative vote of the board, right? Whichever board. You're basically saying we probably should say something like use will only require the affirmative vote of the board, provided it doesn't conflict with the statement of agreement. I, I don't think you have to, I don't think you have to go there because. Because this is supporting exactly. information of the statement of yeah. agreement. Yeah. That's, Excuse my thought. If you wanted to address the issue that Evan raised of 10% per year, you could add in a phrase under the statement of agreement, um, substantial change in use, change or increment or, you know, Incremental change somewhere in your demolition, incremental or substantial change in yields. Continued in incremental change to. No. The thing is, like incremental change, like, does anyone care if we add a little closet? That's incremental change. Like, who cares? Yeah, I don't care if the, if the village adds a closet to any jointly owned building. I can promise you that. Uh, as long as it's not a safety violation. Well, I don't think that's a change of use, adding a closet. I, I think your point was if you change the use by 10% per year over a 10-year period, you would essentially change the entire use of the building, but you'd do it over a long period of time. We could turn the town garage to a community center over time. I mean, if it's throwing everybody for a loophole in regard to station, it's just simply that it's the use at the time of agreement. Well, I was throwing in and substantial can be widely interpreted differently. So keeping it like a use. The garage, the town garage right now. So if they want to change it from the town garage, they need that. If we want to change our village garage from the village garage, we need that. That's all it's if it changes from its original use from the current use. I don't really care what you do with the village garage. I don't care if you care what you do with the village garage. Well, you know, well let's say the village. <laughs> but it's a jointly owned property, and that's so something you don't, don't care if you care as well. <laughs> Wait, so they can have a meeting to change the village garage. You'd have to have a meeting with everybody. But if you wanted to, this thing originated with the mural. So if you wanted to put a mural no, on this. Yeah, this is before the mural. Oh, we were talking uh, about this last year. So, I mean, it really, it's really okay either way because if you want to make substantial change you're going to invite everybody to the meeting to discuss what you want to do to change it otherwise that's going to stay the village garage and that's going to stay the town garage 
mutually owned buildings we meet anyway. And so I, and I agree. It doesn't really. The right. difference yeah. is your interpretation of substantial and mine are drastically different. Right. Doesn't mean it's a simple closet as they were saying. I'm just. Right. Um, so. Where do we land? What? No. So we're an open meeting. We need to speak up so everyone can hear and yeah. not need to take minutes. <laughs> it and, said in the proposal, use the proposal for which the building is dedicated to at the time of agreement. It's already in. I didn't write this up, so that's why. I but you're thinking about just picking out substantial. It doesn't say substantial in this sentence. It says huge. So the other parts of it say substantial. And Mark's definition of substantial is greatly different than mine on most everything. So that would be not just me and Mark, but I'm sure at some point in time, Eric, idea of substantial would be different of what we're going to use. So what are you or Duncan? What are you thinking with just taking the word substantial out of the the Bob later on statement? Since we already have it directly there. right there, use at the time of agreement, the dedicated use or time black and white digital. That doesn't doesn't mean maintenance would be you need to call it. <laughs> that's that's Interior maintenance, the general maintenance of the building. I mean, ain't changing the use. But no changes is what I'm hearing. I don't think. What I'm hearing. No changes. Well, I think Kelly wants to change it. I'm happy with it the way it is. And it is. Mm, yeah, I'm just looking up this is substantial. Like, how would it sound without that word in it? <laughs> Basically, keeping it like as long as it doesn't change from what it is right now, it's fine. That way, you're not putting any kind of restriction on it. And that's what well, under current use it. I think there's two different I think there's two different reasonings I, I totally agree with what you're saying Kim about restricting the uh, I'm, I'm okay with the with the sentence being written at the time of signing of this agreement the statement of the agreement, I think the intent of that, and maybe it's not worded well, is to get to the point that you were making earlier about one entity or the other not devaluing the total property through their actions, which would have a detrimental impact on the total value of the property. Because we, right, wrong, or otherwise, we all own it. And the the in in we when I say we, the select board is the representative of the citizens, and you guys are the representatives of the village taxpayers. So we have a fiduciary responsibility not to devalue the property to the point where it, you know, would impact the value. No, yeah, we agree on the that. taxpayers. So what would it look like if we just took that word substantial right out and just left it demolition or change in use? I mean, that way there isn't no something there that gives a little bit of leeway. It's black and white at that point. If we just took that one word out. I actually think it, I actually think it creates a higher bar to take substantial out. 
I think if you just leave, I, I, my interpretation, which may be different than yours, again, would be that if you if you just talk about um, change in use, then I could say, well, you guys are putting a closet in. That's a change in use. Not really. Change in use would be going from a uh, town garage to a store. Well, I'm That's just that we have a village garage and they need a closet, but it's not a change in use. Right. That's what would fall under your mural which would be general maintenance. If you change it to change of use, and and we'll use town garage for a second, and we're using town garage to store our vehicles, and that's it. We don't store supplies right now, currently. And then two weeks from now, we decide, oh, well, you know, we have all this extra space. Let's also use it to store a bunch of bags of sand, whatever. We are now using the town garage for more than the current use at the time in which we agree to this. In a different that way. is not substantial, but it is a change. It of is use. a change. To, to me, I don't even look at it as a change of use. I just look at it as the town garage adding stuff to it, like you're adding equipment. You're taking equipment away. You're putting your your parts and pieces in there. You're putting a skid steer in there. That's all part of the town garage or village garage stuff. To me, the change in use would be on, you take that out, and we're gonna. We're going to make it a um, food shop. It to me, that's changing. It depends use. on how you're defining the use. And that's now, where, right? what, but that's it. There's that change there. You know, who's doing what? Like, he, that's what he's saying with that. Substantial, you got that thing, same exact thing. You know, a substantial change, in my opinion, is different too. Eric? I was just going to say take out substantial change in use, then the change in use would include everything. So a minor change in use would be captured as well. So leaving substantial means it will only be a major change in use. But it's in there as substantial in devaluation. Well, if you guys decide to put a store in your garage, your garage is doubled in value. So you're not going to devalue it. And now you have a store in the garage and you didn't have to ask it. Just to clarify, it's or not and. That's your story. No, it's because it right here. It's the word order. Okay. Well, I get that, but Eric, I'm just saying without substantial. What, what if, like, if like there's space in the town garage and rec popping into storage and soccer balls and cones in there, or, or beautification one to put Christmas lights in there? That's not garage. That's, that is a change in use. And I don't think we should. But the there. overall garage is still theirs and it's made for garage stuff. Right. They're just doing little changes inside. They're letting right. this department use this or this. That's they're making changes, but it's still overall a town garage. It's non substantial change. Do you want us to come to you when we're making up when we're putting decorations? But that's it. No, that's why substantial. That's what he's saying with that, too. No, you shouldn't have to. To me, it's a change in use. Okay, we're going to turn it from a town garage to something else. That's it. That's the thing. When we go to substantial, whose version of whose version of substantial is are we going to go off of them? If you take that right out and the use, like you guys are putting like little things like okay, balls in or this in, it's still a town garage. If you're going to change it from a town garage or something else, that's a difference in use. If you're going to add a closet, if you're going to put equipment in, or if you're going to let somebody use one of the rooms. Who gives a crap? I think, it's still a I think you're arguing very successfully for the word substantial by 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 what you're just saying. Because you're talking about who owns the you're talking about operation major, of it, major not changes. the use of it. Yeah. I do have one thing I want to bring up that uh, maybe my grammar is not sufficient, but. The word substantial is meant to apply to both the change in use or change in value. So if we take, take out the word change of value, that's fine. But that's if we take out the word substantial, we're now talking about any change in use, no matter how minor, any change in value, no matter how minor. That creates a lot of meetings where we have to talk about. Don't it, we only care about changes in value down? We don't worry right. about changes in value up. Yeah. Sure. Uh, we could modify it to that. The way the way I had written reduction it, value. Reduction. Yeah. The way I had written it was envisioning if there was a substantial change. If we're changing from a garage to a store, 
that's pretty obviously a substantial change. Whether it's a change in value up or down, that's a obviously substantial change and both boards should discuss it. I truly hate to complicate this. I really, really hate to say this, but I don't have the answer, so I have to say it. If we had a substantial value increase of an asset, doesn't that mean we'd have to cover like insurance and other things? Like there's other considerations we'd have to take. So I think we would have. But we're all split already. But there. I think, but I think my point is, I think we would have to know about, I don't know if we'd have to decide on necessarily, but I do think we'd have to know about an increase in value that it was a substantial increase too, because we need to make sure that we're, whoever is owning whatever insurance or whatever, that we're properly covering it from both the village and the town. You know what I mean? Like there are ramifications if the valuation changes in either direction. That's what I'm asking. That was the intent. It was that any substantial change in value, both boards should have a hand in. In this kind of vote, that is select board vote, is it have, have to be a majority of each board? Yes, each board needs to have a majority. Yes, each side of the memorandum. Whatever. Okay, so what are we going to do? Are we going to act on this? Are we going to modify something? Are we going to push it down the, kick it down the, kick the can again? Oh, let's get together again. <laughs> well, those are the options. So, yeah, I'd like to see a lot better definition of what was just said added to it. I'm peaceful with the way it is. Written. Okay, wait, let's do one board at a time. You want to do your board? So Ken's saying you'd like to have added, you'd add like added text to the statement mm -hmm. of agreement specifically. Well, the substantial <laughs> use part and current use. Okay. And how about you, Diane? I'm fine with the way it is. I'm fine with the way it is. Oh. So you guys could? Yeah, we're good with it. And I'm open definitely to have anything tweaked there. So you're you, not gonna tweak it if you're good with it. <laughs> Does the village want to make a motion to pass it or pass it with a change? The way it is. They're peaceful the way it's written. I'm gathering. Please. But they need to motion their chair to sign it. That's the case. Yeah. Yep. Motion. Uh motion for us to and all you. The way it is. Any more discussion? Vote. Aye. Nay. Aye. Aye. Passes uh, three to one with uh, one uh, absent. I need a motion adopting the MOI and OU as presented off resident chair and sign. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? All right. Uh, Me. I, and you said I, Duncan? I did. Okay. I, did. I said me. Me. Oh, okay. You always <laughs> say me, everyone. You know that. But I am keeping you on your seat over there, Donna. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Next up, uh, let's circle back. Did you do some research by any chance, Rosemary and Lydia? I found out a lot of stuff. You did? I say we That's keep paying that. Of course, his most recent price. They're really, really. 150. Their, their service fee, though, is only $7. <laughs> I know for us, we're more like, hey, I don't know. Per delivery. Per delivery. I didn't see it. Or maybe it's the same thing. Whatever. I know our doctor just put some of these. You have to watch her while I pay for the fees on those contracts. Those contracts. Some companies charge very specific fees on the front of the company. And they can pay them. Okay, so that's for propane. Did you find out anything on oil by any chance? November 3rd, and the price was $5.47. It changes every time they deliver. Yeah. The cheapest was $4.27 early on. I think. $4.27. 
it would be wise to accept the fill and fill iron. And not the propane. And not the propane. Um, so if they're gonna, I get, I mean, not to throw it out there, but it, of course, one commit, right? Go ahead. Right. Right. Course is the is the propane. Yep. The Go price ahead. course is the better price. Brasso is the fuel oil. But course wouldn't commit for the dollar sixty three. Uh oh, I see. Well, that's right. Yeah, that's. Would it be possible to reach out to Brasso's and course and ask if they could just say what their rack plus price is, and we can make a very informed decision really quick. Separate meetings. Each board could do that at, yeah. at their own meeting. Yeah. And we each have a meeting still in November. Yeah. Oh, crap. I mean, it's just propane. If we use 12,000 gallons, we're talking over $6,000. Um, right. Mm -hmm. Going with Fred's route. No. I would also reach out to Fred's and see if they'll do a rack plus on propane. That way we could compare, of course, and Fred's equal head to head on propane and Brasso and Fred's equal head to head. And that'll be a pretty quick discussion. Could one of you take propane and one of you take fuel oil? I mean, the village obviously burns the lion's share of propane, so yeah. we don't need it to all be on the town. Yeah, because if we can do it this week, then we can do ours on Monday when we have our meeting. And fees, so rack price and fees. And if you're if you're in the process of talking with friends, ask them why there's a one thirty cents over rack price and another fixed contract price of four twenty two two nine for the same product. We don't know what our our fee was. Maybe we asked for that. Right. I think the RFP was structured to allow them yeah, full allow flexibility them, yeah. to offer whatever pricing proposal they want. Okay. That so would mean makes their friends' proposal for propane is they decide to give us a fixed price instead yes. of rack. Yeah, yes. we did not ask specifically for fixed price. We asked for a pricing plan, yeah. whatever, however they wanted to sell it to us. And then we'd evaluate it based on how they wanted to sell it. We believe that course at this time is over something over rack. They are both something over rack. Um, I really would prefer to not recite it from memory, and they didn't give it to me in writing. So, uh, I, yeah, I guess that's it. I'm not comfortable Fair quoting enough. prices for them when they didn't submit something in writing. So in order for us to accurately vote them, we're going to need to know what their current rack over rack price is and will they honor that mm -hmm. for at least a one year period. Mm -hmm. Along with any added fees. Along with added fees and also I realized, just going to keep thinking of things, the longer we talk, how much, what our actual usage was over the past 12 months. Well, Eric's going to call about propane. Either one. Just as long as you know, we're making sure the notes are, mm -hmm. they're both writing notes. We don't both need to call. Yeah, they're both so called different call vendors. And I want to know the yep. usage for both vendors. So yeah. do, do we need to take any action with regard to this proposal tonight, such as defer to our individual board names? No, defer. I don't think we need to act on it. Nope. So, I'm just clarifying. I'm getting the rack plus price and fees on propane from both Fred and Course and the last 12 months uses from Course. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. And we're doing fuel oil with that. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. Fred's already had the rack plus price. Current schedule and asking and clarifying about why we've got number two fuel oil as a fixed price and as a Price over rack. Yep. So then we will the minimum propane 
and you guys will approve the fuel oil. Oh, well, well no, it's not, we no. could do that. We we'll, could, but we'd have to have we'd have to ask if we we're going to do that. We'd have to have a motion for that. Right, yeah. allowing the village to take purpose. I would be comfortable with that. Sure. There's no way they're going to select a higher amount. That makes it pretty well. I I mentioned that the village trustees select a propane supplier for this year's propane purchases. And the town will pay our fair share for usage of the supplier you pay. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Sure. We have a second. Sure. You can choose your favorite second person, Donna. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Have it. We'll just what, about the motion, huh? what about the motion for the town to do I a diesel? Like I will motion that we allow the town to set contract pricing for oil for this fiscal year. And diesel. Oil and diesel. The oil and number two, or diesel, correct. Okay. So I'll go with diesel. Yeah. Second. And we'll pay our fair share. Sounds good. Hello? Oh. Hi. 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 Wow. 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 Good job. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next up is website overhaul planning. <laughs> right. You want to take this one, Eric? Well, we've got four different vendors. <clears throat> One of them is our the person of the company currently managing the website, 3W, local, women owned business. And then three other commercial outfits with widely ranging prices. I guess. I guess. Um, Can I? The three the three W's weren't asked to do a new website, so they didn't bid that. So there's their price on the first slide is migration in with the owners, where Revise and Ecopixel includes a new website. Paisley doesn't have a an upfront fee, it's all built into their substantial monthly subscription rates. So we're just selecting website hosting for the next 12 years or next year, right? Well, that's kind of the, the question that's before us. Um, when we, th this was this data was generated when we put out a request for bid for just hosting. But a number of the people who submitted bids also included a new website with their bid. And the select board and the trustees wanted to talk a little bit more about a new website. So we had some data on hand for what a new website might cost. But I'm confused. Uh, didn't Can I back up and maybe set the groundwork a little bit Could, before we get into the confusion part? Could I agree? It's confusing. I think that our original joint meeting last time we met a while back was about whether or not we would needed we were interested in proceeding with a website overhaul. Mm -hmm. That was the context of our last meeting. During the discussion about whether or not we needed to move forward with website overhaul and all of the possibilities around that, there was some um, discussion around what the costs were or would be to do this and whether or not there would be an appetite. So our ask was to have, Eric wasn't here at the time, but to have Eric and Brian um, get together and figure out what costs were presented to us when we had to do the website hosting. We had to switch over. It was, we didn't have a choice in the matter. Um, so what were the costs that, that, that were presented at that time, knowing that a new website was part of some of the cost structure? So that's what this is. It's about informing us on what that cost structure was that was presented when we were talking about this in the context of website overhaul. It doesn't mean that we are looking for a new web host right now. It just means that it's a way to inform whether or not we have an appetite or rebuilding the website. Perfect. Okay, now do you have a clarifying question? Maybe I'm being too literal. 
we already have a website hosting. We already have our website hosting. And they have contract. a three year renewing contract without cancellation that we all agreed on last year. Yes. Which is the 44728? I believe it's lower than that, but um regardless, we we don't need to select a website hosting company. Correct. correct? So we can yes. understand that if we went with a different web website website host, hosting service, company, whatever, it may be more. And I guess this gets us in a ballpark, uh, potentially, about a website redesign, but without samples, this is mm -hmm. really just a number there, on a piece of paper. There are, you get a bunch of submittals. They, they, they've got fancy submittals, we should have the paper to bring them all here. We can, we can send them around. Uh, one of them was uh, Waterbury or Edisburg. Ecopixel, yes. There was interest, I guess, in the, the, the Waterbury design or Edisburg design. Ecopixel does Waterbury. Who so. does Edisburg? <laughs> so I guess that gives us an idea. Um, so this is more just informative. We don't yeah. really need to move forward. Well, you know, we, we don't have the money. We don't have this kind of money in our current budget, but <laughs> it would inform our budget discussion for next year if this is something we desire. We can ask uh, Alyssa, who does our website, for a price on a, a new website. I would expect it to be less than some of the other large carriers. I don't know if she has the capacity or the time to do it, but she has designed website from the ground up for other local organizations. I just make two comments. One is that the person that he's talking about, Lydia, I see you don't have to keep your hand up, but I'll call in a second. <laughs> um, but the person you're talking about basically just recreated what we had. So it's not a representation of her work. I'm not no, I don't know her work, but I just want to say that. The other thing is if we do do a re um creation of a website, we could often the person who does it does host as well. We could look for a host elsewhere. It depends on the way that the website is built out. It's just something to consider with this ballpark for money. Lydia? Well, as a person that works with Elisa, I think the most in the office, I'd like to advocate for her because she's absolutely wonderful. And I did about an hour long training with her last month and had the best time. And she's super informative. I reached out her three times today to hear every website issue. She's very communicative. She has no problem getting right on the phone. Um, and she brought me, we did a training on the historical society website because that one was more way more in depth than our own website. And um, she brought me to her other websites and they were all different, but all super contextual, easy to read. I mean, she's a very visual person, she's creative. I just really enjoy her. I wish I kept those websites, but I don't know. But I'm sure she was going to be able to listen to her So you guys would have an idea. Also, she's great. Awesome. Thank you. That's pretty amazing. A tech people that actually return your call. Yeah, <laughs> it is. That, that's worth some love right there. Do we actually have a a contractual agreement with her for the hosting aspect of it that ties us to three years? Uh, I don't know what our contract terms are. I don't remember. I don't remember either. Uh, off the top of my head, I I believe that it's an auto renewing contract. I, 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 I don't know. Um, so just this was last year, and I'd be really surprised given the state we were in and talking about it last year that we were very much thinking about it as temporary. I'm just gonna look at Eric and Evan at the time, we were very much thinking of it as temporary because we had to get something up. Yeah, um, and I'd be died. shocked if we signed a contract, right? It, I'd be shocked if we signed a contract that locked us in for very long. Well, you're only ever locked in for a year. Do you have something different you wanted to say? So do, right. <laughs> we can either move on to the next topic or we could discuss budgeting for a potential website overhaul. Um, I guess this gives us a ballpark of that. Mm -hmm. If the village could consider and have their own discussions on possibly um looking at their budget, seeing if they could do $5,000 
next year's budget and the town could look and talk about it in our own meetings see if we can fit it into the budget then we can discuss this stuff more in depth and i actually think it's going to be more than that because depending on organizations there's quite a few websites that could all be tied into one I mean, yeah. I think that's part of what we need to know, right? Is how to organize the whole thing. I mean, I have no idea what's needed. So I don't know what kind of person we need to hire. Do you guys know? I think we need to just know whether there's an appetite for budgeting for this first. And if there is, then we can get into what it would mean. Like what would our scope of work be? So that's what you're asking really is what the scope of work yeah. is and that's what you're touching on too but if there's no budget for a board to put it you know to, to invest a little bit then there's no point in talking about scope can be asked a question is there anybody who's happy with the current website and would you like to that's a great question <laughs> as much as i use it yes and no <laughs> it's cumbersome it's not well representative of it's not a great representation of the town uh, but it's not costing a lot of money and depending upon some of these vendors if we can't come back and host with 3w it's not just the $9,500 expense it's $2,100 a year versus $450 Lydia? I think that if, um, if we're going to spend the money on a website overhaul, there needs to be a significant improvement, such as like being able to submit utility applications through the website and stuff like that. Being able to come, all we have on the website right now is like probably a bigger payment, and that's, you know, everything else is there. Yeah. So I think, you know, eliminating the cost of that. Yeah. There's, there's a lot, though. The fire department, water, sewer, electric. Historic Society Library, Recreation, Village Rec, Skate Park. They have their own website? I don't think they do. They, maybe they've they just have got their own Facebook. Facebook. Page. I think they just have a Facebook. Facebook. They have their own Facebook. Um, so, yeah, that's a good point. It could make a lot of our processing of transactions more streamlined. Mm -hmm. And And forget us for a second, and also our customers. Right. And who are, I mean, she just went through an election. We don't have like an election section on our page where they can go to my MVP page to my voter page, you know, find some out on that one rather than having a call and go around. We found our website design person. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, all great comments and content. Uh, we need to get into the meat of whether each entity can carry it in next year's budget before we go much farther because this is a lot of empty conversations i don't think, I think it's each empty. board needs to discuss whether we can carry it for next year we need to put value on it in order for somebody to actually consider what to whether or not they want to budget for it so i think this is about putting value on it before you consider because if you're talking about replacing one thing with another that is not the same value as the possibilities Lydia? Well, just want to point out one um, when we were when I was doing my training with Alisa, it took us quadruple the time because we had to do in WordPress, and I don't know if we use the same company or whatever. Um, there you have to edit everything three times, one for a desktop version, one for an iPad version, one for an iPhone version. Whether we are going to change one size, it's important also to know who's going to be looking at it on what device and if that matters, because we're expecting a course to look at it looking on the phone. Yeah. Yeah, that's bad website design. If one person builds a website, can another company host it or no? You yeah, they the could. Person. It depends on the technology they use for us. For yeah, it depends the technologies they use. Yeah. Could. I think that. But probably not her. Quoting this from memory, most, if not all, of the other people who were offering redesigns had their own content management systems so they would not be hosting someone else's web page. Gotcha. make it priority yeah priority or whatever you use. it would be easy to maintain if we used a more advanced content management system but 
do we generate that much content that we really need it? Okay. Okay. Does anyone have any other questions? Or are the boards good to bring it back? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, employee compensation. I'm going to get the projector on up. I think it's the re uh, responsive design. Like all websites are built for design now. All new websites are. And it doesn't matter what device you need, it automatically reformats. Great. Everybody <laughs> um, walking this way? Hello, uh, Steve. Calling all right. That is an item for Monday. We're going to put that for the end of the day. It is for a conversation during the day. And also put on the, the propane smoke, too. Oh, they said no. I think we should do this more often. You did tell Eric to be on these joint meetings every week, right? <laughs> you want to pen and stab yourself in the eye? That's what they call the bad Eric. <laughs> Eric with a C. You know, that makes him suspect right there. Yeah. <laughs> and then he's required to attend all of your meetings and hours. Right. Yeah. And, none, and none of us have any other obligations. This is the center of our lives. Yes. This is our third meeting this week. Some of us. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's going to be here. I what meeting was you going on for? Uh, yeah, Rosemary. I should have been sure. Take care of him tonight. Yeah. Right. Oh, sorry, you're sorry. This is for the joint employee, Rosemary, and so right now? Uh, This is for everybody. Well, I know it goes off to everybody, but you didn't do it. I don't. There's, there's not technically joint employee anymore. Oh, no. Yeah, but it would affect all of you. Given the gen the gentleman's agreement between yeah. the town, the village, Lydia, Rosemary, Marla, and Susan. Yeah. Technically, their employees are all working the same place. Well, no, because uh, I think Ray Johnson heard it too. Jason too. Yeah. Any non-union employees. <laughs> Eric, you could correct me if you're you seem looking pretty his sharp over there. Historically, <laughs> each <laughs> municipality is <laughs> what is agreed to together. Right. Yeah. Right. Let's say Jason's part of it. Because he's not even. The town would do that. Lights, right. that Rosemary, is that light section of light go off by itself? I mean, is there any way to turn that one okay. section off? Not that one second. We can't turn. Gotcha. Yeah. We can turn a half. Of these, if we can get these back ones, it might help. Yeah. Rosemary, could we afford some more light bulbs? <laughs> <laughs> as long as the village pays for them. It looks terrible. Oh, you do the other the other way. Yeah, that's better. Here it is. I should have asked for I was saying it for I didn't warn any of these. No kids. No sense. I forgot the Apple Pie bar. What? What did you, you say? shouldn't even have mentioned that. <laughs> Are we talking about infrastructure? Five votes. Oh, <laughs> okay. uh, where do we want to start? Healthcare wages. Yeah. Nineteen ninety. Yeah. 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 Uh, for... Looking good, BJ. <laughs> Easy. We got the same. No, we don't. All right. <laughs> so, uh, healthcare cost. 
uh, have risen pretty substantially. We had estimated, at least in the town budget, we had estimated an increase of 8% increased. Uh, was it 12% for Blue Cross Blue Shield? Yes. Uh, so we have some options on, on coverage uh, that we can play from there. <laughs> I got this set up where I can run different scenarios. If we can look at what we had uh, budgeted and what the actuals are. You can see that down here, I've got uh, the town is going to be about uh, 1,500 over um, for all non bargaining unit employees. Um, if we just take the, the mm -hmm. if we leave everything alone and unchanged. Mm -hmm. The 8% that was budgeted, was that off of last year's number or last year's budgeted number? Because insurance went down last year. So if we carried 8% last year, but then actually got a reduction, and then got a 12% increase, like we should have more in the budget than a 15% increase if it was carried based on budgets. I'm just confused about that. And it's very easy but to- But you're only adding the 8% for half a year, right? Yes. Um, but yeah, it right. was- Because we carry it through to our fiscal. Right. Yeah. Uh, and it, it was based off of we estimated an eight percent increase based off of the actual twenty-two numbers. Gotcha. So it went down, and we based it off of that. Yeah. Yeah. They had from twenty-one, they declined in twenty-two, and then for twenty-three, we based our twenty-three estimate off of as an eight percent increase from the twenty-two gotcha. numbers that we knew. It and that's what was known entirely. Yep. Uh, and this right now estimates 24 at another 8%. 24. Oh. Yeah. Gotcha. That's 24.5 or 3.4. That would be 3.4. Right? Yeah, that's really a budget discussion. Not a... So if we, what you're saying here is if we continue with the same contribution, employer contribution, with the same plan, our increase would be over budget by that thousand-ish. About 1,500. Okay. I see the rest of the schedule. On the right? Yeah. It's just the totals. It, it's the totals for different time periods. And this is during this is on the eight percent increase or the actual twelve percent that went up the it's based on the actual numbers for July through December or January through July. Yeah this is the actual numbers for both. This okay. is the actual numbers for But the base no. the baseline is is the twelve percent increase over the last year. Yeah. No, I mean, that's ninety percent. And I have to ask, um, the sheets that we all got for healthcare have three different categories of gold. We need what do we, we select? Use Vermont standard gold. Vermont standard, yep. not, not the, so Vermont standard only has gold, silver, bronze. And platinum. It didn't in Blue Cross Blue Shield. Okay. They only had platinum in standard, in standard plans, not, preferred. not Vermont standard or Vermont preferred. Okay. So I get, I get just standard. Standard is what we're at. We're in the, we're so, in the, we're in the category that has like platinum and silver. So many numbers on that. Yeah. I wish we had those with us. Well, that's why I did this little cheat sheet. 
you know, yeah, I, saw, I wish we had goals. the sheets with us. Yeah. I, 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 I do I, have, I, the, I've got them downstairs, one copy of each downstairs. But I also do have the, I only have standard plan, but I do have the gold, platinum, and silver standard plan. Mm -hmm. Can you make 10 copies? Yeah. Oh, because we don't. Have... So, Brian, you're. They should do 11 by 17. <laughs> Your multiplier that you're using for January through June is an additional 8% over the known figure right now? Yes. And of course, that's not an issue for the village because. Your budget is on a calendar year, which matches up with health care. But then Bill is about to carry it for a full year. But they, they will be doing their budget in February for the current year. Really? That's not for 10 months down the road? That's for two months ago? Yes. Retroactive. Their budget gets approved retroactively yeah. from January 1st. I bet Walter makes that. Right? <laughs> Might run for building a trustee. We used to do it that way. Yeah. 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 So yeah. I'm going to read a, a little bit of something here. And all of these assume a employer contribution continuing at 90%. Yes. I can make changes and make comparisons for any scenario we want to change. I mean, that I baked in uh, numbers for a couple other plans and we can change the percentage. So your column that says town annual would be really be town actual. I mean, the annual actual, the actual annual. Yes. And budget it doesn't tie directly to a line item uh, because our non-bargaining unit employees. Well, yeah, because we pay for sixty percent of her one pay for twenty percent of her salary. Ah, we pay for so, of her. so that's what the, the cost of the town that really isn't the budget line that I could like Brian's and Jason's sure. and all the I public works we pay now all of that. Yeah. Um Eric could also prepare uh some comparisons for you uh, in the one that has the village of Johnson. Uh, there, we use the most recent uh, League of Cities and Towns uh, benefits and compensation survey to pull up a few. <laughs> so, so we're third up from the bottom on compensation for our employees out of all the towns. What do you mean? So if you look at this, all the other towns on plat are paying 100% of platinum. No, not all. But, the well, no, no. But if you look, and then it's 90, and then you come to the gold, and we're like the third up from the very last. But remember, this is only insurance, and this is a poor representation of everything that's in here. I fact-checked one or two earlier today, and... Uh, you know, like Underhill, for example, does pay 100% of the gold high deductible plan, wow. which is considerably cheaper than the 90% that Johnson pays for a non-high deductible. So while it may be 100%, a lot of this data depends on how towns submit it to VLCT and interpret it. Yeah, so, a high deductible plan means that the, the person who is employed is paying a lot out of pocket. And compared to our plan, our employees aren't playing a lot out of pocket. So kind of like the Jefferson bill, even though they're doing 100%, you're, they're still paying more than our people at 90 on gold. Thank you I would have to pull this. So I have to get my like, my Possibly, it depends on what it. Jefferson bill is doing. But also, you have, have to... Can... So we're just looking at, like, say, Jeff, uh, well, we're talking about Underhill, but 
I just asked like platinum plan, Jefferson is paying hundred percent of platinum. Right. And we're talking about deductibles and where Johnson's paying 90% of gold. Right. We may pay less deductibles than Jefferson bill. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, deductibles, right? The deductibles are higher with gold. The plan is so the the plan is far better. They're higher, but I was just explaining to BJ that not all of this is conclusive. Uh, I check Underhill, for instance, and they do pay 100% um, of the gold plan, but it's 100% of the premium for the high deductible gold plan, which is considerably less than 90% of the okay. non-high deductible. Right. So to yeah, compare that, apples to apples, that's, so it's not be, accurate. So on the gold, it might not be apples. On the platinum, there is only one platinum. So all... So, Hold on one second. So all the towns on this list um, they can't give be place. superior coverage. Because I was what I was saying is our compensation for our employees are third up from the bottom. Right. Like we're right so at the very bottom. Okay. BJ. Yes. It's third up from the bottom on the sheet. Uh, there was how many towns submitted for that? Yeah. There's there's towns on the list that are doing 50% of premiums. So this is a filtered list. And I understand that you were representatives third from the bottom, but oh from they're doing like, like 85 again, and up. I wouldn't get like incredibly caught up. We should not even actually consider this. Right. This is not valid information. It's almost impossible to do a direct comparison. And there's also plenty of towns that offer a silver plan instead of a gold. Which right. um there are plenty of towns that offer better benefits packages and lower wages. Oh. Yeah. Um, so, well, silver is a lesser package. No, I'm saying uh, Hyde Park. I, I get what you're saying. Hyde Park does a premium platinum plan, but their compensation rate is lower for every employee on the municipal comparison sheet. And. Am, am I right in understanding that the town and village offer a dollar amount that the employee then can apply towards plans? And if they're picking a plan that is less than a family plan, they can put that plan, they can choose whatever plan they want, basically? Correct. Like, for instance, myself and Sue, pay a good bit more than the 10% to be on the platform plan because we recognize how much better that plan's coverage is. But conversely, you could do, you could choose like I did. I chose a high deductible plan when I was an employee and I could take the balance of the money that was the pot of money that we got and I put that into a health savings account and I had more than enough to cover you know, for me. Um, so I, I think there's a lot, what my point is, is a fair amount of flexibility um, in, the, in the way it's currently offered to town and village employees. Yeah. And yes, I agree. If you want the best plan, you're going to pay more for the best plan. Lydia, did you want to say something? Well, it's just, I'm wondering if Evan knew what, like, under offered a savings account and you just say or Mm -hmm. Not on the municipal sheet that I saw because there was a little checklist there. I didn't call Underhill to verify. I took it from the same source that this data came from. Um, but we are getting very off track. We need to focus on our employees and doing what's right for our employees and stop comparing to apples to oranges, right? Um, I think. We'd be roughly fifteen hundred dollars over what we have budgeted, Brian, if we stayed par at ninety percent. Yes. I personally am comfortable with that. Uh, well, that's for the current year, though, isn't it? Well, yeah, that's through for six months. That would be through June thirty. Right. We select by the employees for the full year. It's it's January first to June thirtieth. It's six months. But then from July first we'll through, a, we're a new estimating budget, right? yeah. what the budget is going to be, which is going to be. We know what the budget will be 
for us for or pay for, for half a year for the first six months. For the first six months, but yeah, we'd yeah. be estimating yeah. other folks. Yeah. And then you calculate it. You want to pay for six months. I'm currently estimating another rate. Are there any yeah, delivery, delivery fees? fees? <laughs> I don't know. And that's a key one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can we do a quick temperature check of a, of the select board? Uh, are we ready to do a temperature check or do, are there other questions? There could certainly be questions. I know that you have an opinion, but hold on a minute. You mean yeah. just yeah, with regard to health? With regard to health, yes. You're, are you good with health? Uh, I, I'm, yes. Okay, Eric, do you have any questions? No. Mark? It's 1500 bucks. I'm very okay. Over budget. Yeah, over budget. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's correct. That's correct. Yeah, right. I understand. I understand that, but we don't know what next year. Well, we don't. Know the that, first you know. six months. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. Let's give the trustees a chance to talk to. Seems like it's. I mean, that's why I like. Don't they make these complicated thing if it's if we do it of giving employees. That choice a little bit. Uh, um, so I guess they have to take a chance. That's fine. right. That's it's, and it's just like the fuel prices too. You were taking a chance of uh, that you would have gone over that and had a, a bigger expense, but that's where each person can make that individual choice. I think ultimately what it comes down to is we offer these packages today. We know the cost of the packages is going up. We know the percentage of that cost is whatever Brian said. Um, going up on both sides of it. the ledger. It'll come up, meaning, and what you mean by that is it'll, the cost will increase for both the employer and the employee. Right. The question mm -hmm. that is really before us is are we willing as employers mm -hmm. to accept that cost to keep that percentage? That we cover right now, <laughs> keep the percentage where it is, or not. And if not, it means it gets passed down to the employees. And I think that what the what just for context, the select board is saying is that um, we are comfortable eating the additional cost, knowing it will disrupt our budget. But there's little control we have over healthcare. And we're choosing not to pass on additional increases in cost to the employee. So I guess the question for those trustees is the same. Yeah, I'm gonna look. I say we need this and don't subtract. Yeah, I mean, the same. I'm still going to know our budget, but I, I think we kind of have no choice. Um, so let me. Yeah, because yeah, even if we stay at 90, our costs are going up, but still their cost goes up too with sure. the deductibles and all that. So we're both yeah. kind of taking some, we're just not giving them all the burden. Exactly. No parents. Okay. It's not like, I mean, it's not like you have a consensus that everyone on your board yeah. said the same. Yeah. 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 question. Um, the way it's currently been set up is a certain plan, a certain 90% cost of that plan is what the town and village contribute a dollar amount, but the employees still can select whatever plan they right. feel fits their needs. Yeah. Right. Yeah. There, there's there's been an agreement on that. Yeah. 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 Status quo is that the town and village pay 90% of the blue cross in blue shear. Standard plus plan, and then they can slip employee can slip from the cafeteria to all of that. Yeah, and what they may want. We're not looking at changing that of the options or the contributions. Okay, uh, we have a bunch of people in our audience. Does anyone else have questions? I like 90. You like 90 percent. I have a small question. Mm -hmm. About the contribution that the employee opts out, would there be any 
Stand will change that. Make it net, maybe more. To benefit an employee and the employer more if they outsource their health insurance. Because there's be a pretty cost savings to the town if more employees took the health insurance somewhere else. In the family plan, you're talking 20 grand, give or take. Yeah. 26. Yeah. Depends on that. Depends on the salary, but yeah. And right now, what's the percent that we pay out? 50 percent of so the, the contribution of a single um, Blue Cross Blue Shield. It, it's 50 percent of our contribution for a single person. Um, this had come up a while ago about uh, sourcing it to what the person would qualify for. And I had expressed a lot of misgivings about about that. Uh, I've since spoken to a couple of towns that do base their buyout on the plan of the people who would call. Based the savings. It was not something I would have a lot of personal comfort with, but it, other people are doing it. There are several towns that they like. Right. So why so, wouldn't you, Brian? Go. If other people are doing it, I'm more, a lot more comfortable with it. But before, I didn't like the idea of I compensation <laughs> to an employee's marital status or or family status or family status. Okay, I just want to say that I hear what you're saying, and I get that's your opinion. I want to be really careful that we separate your opinion from the but, words. It isn't my uninformed personal personal opinion where I thought this sounds this sounds like something I'm uncomfortable with. I would want to talk to other people before I did anything. I did, and a few other towns have said that they are doing it that way. I think best point though is it's it's not your decision. It's not an I, it's a we. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and it, it, it is very much not my decision. Yeah. Um Jason. I will offer a thought if I could. Hold on one second. I just okay. called Jason. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. I, 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 I all I yeah, all I was gonna say is for me, I have no problem sharing. I take the family plan. So it's 28,000 plus profile. The bio is different. I would opt out. Mm -hmm. Same here. Okay, that's a fair point. Thank you. Duncan, what were you going to say? Um, just a little historical background. This was first offered quite a while ago. So, I mean, that's certainly something that could be updated. Um, but before that, there was no opt out provision. You know, if you opted out, you opted out and you got nothing. Yeah. There was no compensation whatsoever. So this is at least something. That's the way it is in all the companies I've worked for, actually. <laughs> you can opt out, but yeah. That's private sector, uh, <laughs> right? Uh, no, not necessarily. Lydia? I don't know if this is 100% true, but maybe at that time also the employer contribution was not 100%. Yeah, I'm not going to speculate, but Eric? Um, I guess maybe playing off a little bit of what Brian was saying, I always felt uncomfortable asking what the employee would be qualified for because of all the HIPAA rules mm -hmm. that are out there. And that, you know, we really, maybe we can ask that. And they can tell us that they're married or not or have feelings, but I don't really feel comfortable with that. You have to know that in order to pay it. Right. And yeah. so I already know it. You would have We'd to. have to do it based on the um, tax filing, I think, the W 9. Whatever the W is. I just think it's very simple and straightforward the way it is. And I wouldn't want to change it. I agree. Presently. You, you're in or you're out. Well, if you opt out of our health plan, we can give you a half of a single member. Half of what we would contribute to a single member plan. You don't need to tell us if you're married or not or 
The, the only thing you do have to do is show proof that you have insurance with someone, someone else. And, you know, yeah. Some that you're covered under somebody else's insurance policy. And we have two employees that do it, right? Two or three employees that do it right now. Have to do it. I don't know the number. I think it's two or three. To, to play off of Jason's point, that way, you know, it's it, it's a way and it's working for two people. Um, first, folks like, like Jason, I am sure others that have the family plan have access to, you know, much less um, favorable health insurance policies for our spouses. That that amount of money difference, you know, is there's not enough. It's, it's not enough to make the change. So, if the if the respective boards want to save money on more plans, they they have to restructure. And that could change at any given time, depending on the employee mix too. I don't, I don't think we should be making our decision on, right. on that. Mark, did you want to say something? I'm with bad air. So here's here's your temperature check on the select board, I guess. Uh, I would be uncomfortable forcing people to prove that they're married or had children or whatever. Um, if you wanted to give more, you would from my standpoint, you would have to give a higher percentage of the single plan. But I would not do it based on any two person plan or something, no. something like that. At least but, if it was consistent, right? Yeah. Um, some people choose not to get married, and I guess the town would be denying them money because of their choice if that was the case. We base it on marital status, right? I'm not going to all of that. Don't ask that question. I'm just saying whatever is done needs to be fair and consistent. And not not based on your race, not based religion, on your, marital status, your life choices. Right. Uh, Jason, I just <clears throat> I think you guys misunderstood what I was saying. I'm talking about the single up in the single person contribution more, not basing it off of family or not. But if you could up the single person and you could keep the interest of all the people that have a good air percent. I'd be careful if I be <laughs> Okay. So I, I um, think that's something we could talk about as a budget. We could talk discussion. about the budgeting. Yeah, I I agree. We we don't have to answer. That I guess in there, it's good. I'm boards, glad you're bringing it up, though. Thank you. Boards for... could decide that on their own. Mm -hmm. That's true. We all have independent it would be, employees. It would be good to do it jointly, but so we don't it's have the same to. benefit for every employee, particularly this sits in this building. The one next right. to you doesn't get a bigger benefit than you do. Mm -hmm. Okay, so are we? Uh, do we want to make a motion? What do we want to do? Uh, with regard to, uh, with the, do we need to? I would rather do, let's do total compensation in one motion. We could do uh, rate increases, and Fine. when you look at it as one item, then it gets okay. a little bit cumbersome. Do you all want to talk any more about healthcare? No. So like, why are we having this joint meeting? <laughs> okay, other compensation. Okay. See, we like paper. Thanks for printing these out here. Yeah. Good, Eric. Yeah. What did we come up last week? Do you remember what? What did we get last year? Six percent. Yeah, six percent. Last year it was. Last year we gave a three percent increase. Okay, thank you. Uh, to all non-bargaining unit employees, um, and we had estimated a three percent increase for this year at, at the top. Uh, so again, that sets us. 
Um, we actually had budgeted a little bit more. We had budgeted a little bit more than we are currently spending. Uh, but is that because of the fifth employees, right? Right. Uh, no, because yeah. the fifth employee is a bargaining unit oh. employee, so it's not included. In oh, so this is all non we, we didn't expect it to be so high this year either. We were hoping it was going to go down, if I remember right, because it was stupid high last year. But yeah, that's that's with a with continuing the three percent. That's through slight changes in. I think it's mostly our our right. So I've got a couple scenarios up here, uh, and again, I can change the rate, so <laughs> whatever you want. Um, and Eric had made up a cost of living fact sheet. This is the first page, which I have a quick amendment on. So the CPI. That's the national number. The New England number is actually 0.8% lower. It's 7.4. So. Northeastern region. Actually, Northeastern region is a little bit different. New England, right. New England itself. Last yeah, the, the Northeastern <laughs> age, New York and other. I, I, I pulled it right down to New England's 10.4. So yeah. would that be your first bullet, Eric? Yeah, the September twenty two. First, yeah, the first bullet is the national, but we're actually at seven point four. Seven point four. Yep. Do you remember what last year's cola was? Was it like eight one eight? Oh, it was only six. The cola. I thought cola was lower and CPI was six. Higher. Um, and we hit, yeah. that's why we did. So I remember we did almost exactly the same thing that it was last year. It's like we went between the two, didn't we? We did. We went in between. I don't believe so. No. I think we, I think we were like, one, both of us, one wanted to be on it, one wanted to be a few below it. And I think we went in between that. Uh, I, mean, I think we went high. I believe we went high. I think there we went was six. Yeah, and that was 6.2. I remember that. And then it was something about five eight, and I think we decided in the very middle of it. That's why I'm making yeah. the noise. Maybe we need a little bit of a because I remember being very early. But it was easy to do because of insurance. Yeah, that's but I was still very reluctant. It's, 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 it's intermission right time. Yeah, yeah, it's very hot. I mean, maybe, it, uh, it might have already maybe we need a Clean it. large exactly screen TV yeah. with a wireless yeah. keyboard and mouse. <laughs> a smart quiet. We need a quality party. We're going to have We're going I think it's a great idea, Evan. It's like everything else. I think the electric department could pay for it. For sure. But it would be an electrical bill. Which the town owns half of. It's not, but don't want to change the use. <laughs> okay, let's get the show on the road so we can leave. Can we start talking? So Eric, what were you saying? You're changing. Okay, change New England. Got it. Check. Yeah. New England seven point four versus eight point two. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll just say my thing right after that. I was gonna wait for the long. I'll just pick us off. I uh, I'm worried if we follow CPI forever because meaning if we use CPI as our guide. Every time we get a raise, we are going to have peaks and valleys. While I understand it's reflective of what people are feeling in the moment, I get it. Uh, but I'm a little bit worried about using it at a point in time and not looking at a trend over time. I personally like the idea. I love trend lines. I think trend lines are the way to think about everything <laughs> when it comes to budgeting and numbers. 
<clears throat> because I like looking at trend lines over an extended period of time, seeing where that linear, and I'm not talking about a rolling three month or rolling three year, I'm just talking flat line. I like to see where the trend is headed to be, to make informed decisions around budgeting. And I kind of feel that way about um, cost of living increases. I feel like if we give a spike, I we we are in a spike, right? And I think we're just justifying being in a low for the past COVID years, really, um, in this spike. So we're in a spike right now in terms of cost of living. I think we need to come to a point where we flatten out that spike. I think we need to think carefully about how we flatten out that spike. Um, my point in saying all of that is I don't love the idea of using, using a 7.4 uh, as a percentage increase this year. That being said, I do like the idea of uh, supporting our employees and I think it's important that we do. Um, but I would rather bump that down a bit and make sure that we're considering it next year if it is a really low number that we're thinking about it differently than if next year is a 2%, I don't think it will be, but if it was a 2%, like I wouldn't want to give a 2%, I would want to give a higher amount. So how do we get to a point where we can look at this? Yeah, look at this a little bit differently so we're not spiking and valuing. Evan? Um, it incorporates the spike in the valley, um, but I do fully agree with you that budgeting is extremely important and the town has to carry the cost of this decision for six months. Um, with that being said, in Another conversation, um, somebody had mentioned doing the previous year's CPI as a raise. That way, you could budget for it. You already knew what the number was. And granted, there would be some peaks and valleys in the budget. And the employees may be a day late, but they won't be a dollar short because you lag a little on the rise, but you lag on the fall. That would be a very good way to budget everything. So. If, would you go by the CPA or something? CPI. Uh, well, you could go by any. You could go by any metric you wanted, as long as you were consistent at twelve months prior. So, we're going to go into budget decisions in two weeks. If we said next year we're going to give CPI, bam, we already have it, seven point four. We know what the budget. We'd hit it, and then next year, if inflation is. 5%, following year we would budget 5%. And in carrying costs, we would be covered. And the employees, like I said, would not be a dollar short. And I actually, I, I like that. Um, and my, my worry is if the CPI is five and we give a four, we're always gonna be behind. They're gonna always be behind, but if we do the CPA or CPI, and we do the year out, like you're saying, they're always going to be caught up with the cost of living. Even if they are a little late on it, they're still going to be in that balance somewhere. Just... And what I like about that is, yes, it's fair to the employees. They're going to maybe be a day late, but they'll get their cost of living increases. Too. But what it does for us with budgeting, we are building our budget in December. We'll know what the budget and we won't be hit with a shortfall. My counter to that is we all support our customer mm -hmm. and our customer are our taxpayers. And how are we being fair to our taxpayers? How are we all being fair to our taxpayers while supporting what we need to support in our employees and our operations of the town? And I personally feel that being fairest to the taxpayer is being as um, flattening that impact to them as much as possible. So it's predictable. I think that predictability to our taxpayers is important. 
I, I think it's worth acknowledging. I mean, this is always a extremely difficult and delicate balancing act between valuing and rewarding good employees and retaining good employees and being responsible to the taxpayers. Um, that's for me. That's where the rubber hits the road. Is how do you how do you how do you fairly balance knowing that some of our taxpayers aren't getting any cost of living adjustments at all, um, you know, as part of that process. So, and, and some of them are, and some of them are, you know, well compensated, but in general, you know, the taxpayers at Johnson are not in the wealthy category. Um, and a lot of people look at um, the municipal employees as being, you know, well compensated. Well, they look at the federal employee, the state employees the same way. It's just that's the nature of the beast with there. It, it is, and it's our responsibility to explain that to people. Um, but but nonetheless, it's um, you know, it's tough when you're accosted by somebody on the street who says, I'm not getting nothing this year, <laughs> you know, and, and you guys are paying uh, you know 100 percent of the health plans and, and our, our our employees are, are well compensated, I think, according to you know, salary surveys and whatnot, and, and the benefits are good. So I, I, it's a difficult balancing act. I'm, I'm not, I guess I'm just philosophically saying that. No, it's and, a, and it's it a tough decision. We just can't not reward our employees because there might be somebody less fortunate than them. But also we are looking, I look at it like where I work, we got 500 employees. Now this little points make a difference. We got seven employees, the rest are on union and they negotiate their stuff. The employees that we have, the five or seven, they don't have that power to negotiate, whether to negotiate for them or make sure they're taken care of. And we can't go by um, Joe down the road, doesn't get a raise. So, you know, we shouldn't take care of our employees because we want people to come here if our employees ever get done too, to see that we do pay our employees good. That's the balancing act. Yes, absolutely. And that's why I like Evans because that way, like our budget, we know what's coming up and we're not getting blindsided and all that stuff. And we might have seven this year and three next year, but I don't know. I just think that was a good idea. So in good Eric's sheet here, he's got uh, federal employees raises are set for 2023 at 4.6. Where, where did that... Figure, where'd that factor figures come from? Came to, straight from the White House. Well, I, Joe Biden set for that. So that's set for all federal civilian employees, same employees. The proposed military raise is the same, but there's a lot of that Congress has say in that, and there's a lot of talk of increasing that to, to match social, social security COLA. So that's that remain the military remains to be seen, but the the federals are set. Evan, so I fully agree um, with being fair and protecting the taxpayers. We we all have the duty to do that. Uh, real quick though, the difference between a one percent raise and a six percent raise. So even if we're lagging, is one penny. And you can correct me if I'm wrong on that, Rose Mary. Twenty thousand dollars is one penny on the grand list. Mm -hmm. Close enough. So even if we followed that lag, we're really not talking massive swings in tax bills. Right now, this year. Well, at, even at 7%, it would be 1.1 1 .1 cents per dollar. And this is one factor. <laughs> it is one factor, um, but supporting employees is... And a very important factor. Yeah, every every other cost is going up too, right? Fuel, salt, and fluoride. And in the next couple of years, it will go down. I mean, it has to go down eventually. We've had pretty high polls of half. It won't go just as fast. Right. But and then they'll be down too. I mean, if it goes down, if we, we agree on something like this, when it doesn't go down to that two percent, we stick to what we're kind of doing. And that would be the fair part of the whole process. Is sticking to it. Eric? I was just going to mention, kind of support what Evan saying, um, as you know, someone who's kind of tasked with retaining and attracting talent, you know, it's a very competitive market right now for employees. You know, it's, it's hard to bring people in. Mm -hmm. 
You ought to try construction. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> uh, so we're really not getting at what we're here for tonight. Um, I don't know why you make statements like that. That's what, not so, true. What, good you no, know, we're here tonight to decide what uh, the employees are going to get for raise. Yeah, I'm talking about future years and being able to budget it so that it's fair for the employees. So, what did you have Brian do? I had Brian total up what the total out of pocket for the town only, Brian. Uh, no, I, that's for a town. Oh, man, so the total out of pocket. For the town and village, uh, for the six employees in here, or seven is is Dean in there? Uh, it is seven employees. Okay, the total out of pocket difference from a one percent raise to a six percent raise, combined between the two entities, is just shy of twenty thousand dollars from one percent to six percent. That was I was That's just point about I wanted to know. How much six percent difference in salaries equates to to taxpayers? And I guess if the <laughs> entire difference, it would be a penny. So it would be less than that because we do not. I guess Eric's not in this list, is he? No. But we don't pay a hundred percent of all the employees on this list. No, no. my first year was already taken, set so. Right, we paid her 416 hours of employee position number one, 1248 position number two and three, full time position four and eight, and five and six, 1248. So, so is there, oh, go ahead. So you're just basically, after, uh, I mean, you're guessing six percent. No, that's not what I said. So on, on your model, um, a year ago, September was 5.4 CDI. So your model, you're, you, you, I'm trying to follow what you're saying. You'd say you do a 5.4 this year and a 7.4 next year. In, the, in what I was discussing, yes, that's how it would work. And it would be a day late, but, but on the fall of inflation, it would not be a dollar short. Right. None of the employees would be. Because right. if it went to two ne next year, they would be getting 7.4 if we were following that. This conversation would be really quick too. I know I'm entertaining, but <laughs> nobody wants to see not me this long. That, not that much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. But yes, that's what such a okay. would be. Yeah, I, I, it makes sense. Maybe and it's I'll... not mine. It was recommended by somebody else. Okay, so is there a proposal out there? The Ken's point. What's your point? Mm -hmm. Sorry, I didn't get it. Asking where he was, what number he was throwing around, but it was just uh, not being agreed. I honestly oh. don't think, with the cost of everything else going up, that the town could afford much over four point five percent responsibly this year. But if we all agreed to budget seven point four for next year, the employees would be caught up. What about starting a whole process? What was last year's again? Five, five four. four. What about starting five point four this year, which was last year's, um, and then next year's a seven point four, and then whatever it ends up being. Uh, last year we gave six, so that five point four is lower, but that could start that whole trend instead of starting it next year or anything like that. We could literally start it this year. I'm only smiling because I, I feel in my head we're going to have to have a memorandum of understanding. Of that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're not going to have to have a memory at least. <laughs> well, let me ask you. Let me ask you. It's the uh, word one uh, from the, the, it makes a difference here. Is it the, the cola, national cola? Is it, what was 5.4 last year? The 5.4 was the national CPI. It's a lot harder to mine on my phone than New England. Gotcha. So, so I say 5.4 starting this year and then starting going on, we do the New England one. Because that's affects us, you know, in this area, even if it is lower than the rest. 
See if in, that was last in just year. a couple of minutes, you could find out what last year was New England. I'm looking at it. Eric, yeah. what were you going to say? Eric, bad Eric, what were you going to say? <laughs> Good air. Good <laughs> He's the one that makes the meat. I, I like the, that idea because um, it, it would be a hard pill to swallow. And, you know, the running numbers we got from 7.4 to 8.7, uh, that would be a hard one to swallow this year. But if we used last year's CPI, whatever it comes out, B5.4, 5.4. Point oh, whatever it is, and then plan on next year using an agreed upon seven point four. Yeah, I, I'd like that. Now you're not happy you corrected yourself, are you? <laughs> and that was a, the September number was the most recently available number. Yes, the uh, October number doesn't come out until next week. I can think about tomorrow. Okay, no. So I think it comes out of 10 to be 12. Yeah. That's so, really late, isn't it? 10 days until May. It's already a third over. So if you keep it at New England, New England annual average, which is not quite the same number we used last year, which is why I'm confused, but annual average from 2020 to 2021 was 3.6. And then 12 months ended at the end of. August 2022 was 7.3, and at the end of September was 7.4. See, for the New England one, I think it was close to what we gave the guys. I think we went above a little above the New England, and we went a little below the, if I remember right, the the national, and that's where we did that in six. Um, I wish we would have remembered what it was. I want to think it was like five, four. Five, five, it was below what we did. I actually wonder if we I used the month end really number, just... which is why we don't see what we actually talked about last year. So, <laughs> okay, um, proposal for a number. Who's going to throw it out there? Five, four. Five, four. I was going to go six. Six. Sure. Any other numbers thrown out there? <laughs> I don't know. It's probably Jason. There's Jason. No, That's pretty uh, funny. Okay. You have five, four, and six thrown out. Take the five, four out. If we don't know what last year it was. Hold on one second. We have five, four, and six. Let's leave it there for a second. Are there any other discussions? Lydia? I just want to put in perspective that thank you for the 90% in health insurance, but I would personally, I would need at least a five and a half percent to even like even with my new contribution. That would be true. Yeah, unfortunately, I hear you. Unfortunately, we don't have control. I understand we don't have control over insurance costs, but I hear you. Okay, so thoughts? Uh, I already told you my thoughts on both. Okay. Uh, motion. Or in the motion, do I codify the process going forward? With seven. Do you think we've been herding cats so far? <laughs> I'm just trying to. <laughs> well, I'm trying to make it simpler next year. We can having... codify a number. The thing is, we can't codify. Or... We can't actually codify. We don't have the same boards. Yeah. Right. True. We cannot hold future board. Right. But we could have a renewing. Or Put your intent in the motion, I guess. Yeah. So it uh, next year, seven point four, New England CP. How far is that going to blow our budget, Brian? Uh, if we how do five point four right now, six right now. If we do six right now, uh, that puts twenty thousand dollars. A little under two thousand. A little under what? Two thousand. Two thousand over. Uh, two thousand over. Yeah, cause, cause no, it's six. Oh, okay. It's six thousand. Oh well, we only have to carry it for six months. Right, because uh, eighty, so it's three thousand here. I uh, the bottom of the budget. It is, is how much we had planned to pay for the FY twenty three fiscal year. I think is that right where the uh, glare from the. Yeah. So town share basically okay two two thousand dollars. We would be two thousand dollars over. 
for what the six to month period or the for for the full year. Full, for the full year. So we're only going to be a thousand dollars over. No, it'd be two thousand over. But it's for the full. The line item is for the full year. For, so it'd be two thousand over for this, and then we'd be over also for health insurance. Yeah. Oof. Fifteen hundred over on, and then two thousand on this, which is not a huge amount to be over. Frankly. I know it's not that. I motion to. Uh, I mean, we don't really have joint employees, but to give shared employees a six percent raise and continue the well, health insurance. <laughs> huh? Bargaining unit, please. Non All bargaining non unit. Non bargaining. So non doesn't matter. Non bargaining unit. Anybody that's in a bargaining unit is not shared. My motion is about shared. Mm -hmm. We have no shared. Uh, hey. No. Strictly speaking, we have as a joint as joint boards. We have to agree on Rosemary and Susan's pay. Fair enough. That's good. Donna, can we start over? <laughs> I motion to get uh, Rosemary and Susan a six percent increase in pay and keep health insurance contribution as is currently. Ninety percent of the blue cross blue shield gold. Do we have a second? All those in favor? You put me in the grade. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Do we have to put the continuing next year? That's a little different. Good luck getting that one. I'm not, I'm not, I mean, I'm really to not to do something to follow, follow, but I'm just saying. It's so. tough. It does we make the budgeting easier. In the MOU, you're going to have to because it could be different boards. Yes, very well. Okay. We can make the same motion this year. With the 7.4 new Wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait, wait. Right. Second. Uh, more discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Um, order. One discussion. One absent. So are okay. we are we good on this item? Yeah. Historical society. Well, whether we have to move that or get the part. How do we move okay. forward with that? We yeah. cannot. I'm on you. Just going to remember this real, discussion. Real okay. quick. <laughs> real quick. We cannot hold a future select board. No, I get that. But I want board. them to know that we get through this in case so a lot of us are still on the board. Yeah. Have that That's what I, would recommend. I would recommend that we ask Eric and Brian to put in your respective calendars a year from now, so the beginning of November. A reminder to pull the meeting minutes from this meeting, this specific date, to give to the boards. And Brian, do you have that action? I do. To you try to put it, down. put it right in your phone. Yeah. To try to properly budget for it. So, in terms of the other employees, the village will vote on the village employees will vote on the mm -hmm. town employees as part of the budget process. Uh, no, we'll do that at our next meeting, probably our December meeting, maybe. We do it before January 1st. So we have to, on our own employees, select the, the health plan right off, or we can do it right I now. Know. Yeah, we could do it at the end of the meeting. Yeah, we'll do it right now. I think we should do it now, so there's no uncertainty over. So do you want to make that one? Can we do the motion on our... How are we employed right now? Motion to uh, give same pay and insurance compensation rates to non bargaining units for the town. Oh, non bargaining employees. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Yes. Any opposed? Abstain. I didn't hear any of it employed. I said I didn't. I did. So, the reason I don't hear your voice. So we can help. Eric, oh, well, Eric, it's I'm bad, Eric. It's bad, Eric. It's <laughs> at the same time. employees. <laughs> just uh, the same motion. I know. Really? No, that's it. Well, second. Maybe more. Second. Yeah, I just really did it. All in favor? Discussion. Or discussion. Aye. Aye. Yeah, we're going to do about a second. DJ motion, can you second? Diane seconded. Or Stein, Stein, sorry. 
Oh, say so four hundred. That usually means it's four hundred. Okay. You know. All right, Actually, now can we do... you're sitting on that side, so you should fill this meeting. That we know <laughs> <laughs> they did most of the talk. <laughs> All of them. Can we do okay. the most? We do. Well, no, we're not yet. Well, after on the list. No, we added agenda items at the beginning. Oh. We, we added the historical society weather vane, Duncan. Uh, yeah, and I, again, I you know I don't know. We need to make a decision. It would be great if you can, but um, as I said at the beginning of the meeting, there is a historic weather vane, which is owned by the Historical Society. They would like to display it in the atrium. Um, I don't know how big. Is it, so it, it, we allow the historical it's kind of, the it's it's fairly tall. Um, it has the the uh, four. It's very old, so it doesn't have. North, south, east, west, it has um, like fleur de lis um, or curly cues um, in each of, the, each of the four directions, and then a vein. And the vein is probably three feet long. Um, so, but it's probably 10 feet tall. In the process. So which so one motion to allow yeah. the historical society to place the weather vein and build it. Okay. So, Aye. all in cool. favor? Aye. 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 They're good. I would rather see it and know a little bit more before we decide. You said twelve feet tall; it's huge. Need to know we'll a little more. Just sit on the floor or something yes, else. We would. We would, I, I would have to put some sort of noun. I was looking at a big stump or something like that. To, and and we'd probably have to tie it off to the wall just to make sure. Okay. The There's agreement from the village. So can you bring some more info to select our next select board yeah. meeting? Okay. Yeah, that'd be great. Here we go. <laughs> And then, oh, one more item, last minute ad. And I forgot to ask, I forgot to ask for this at the beginning of the meeting, uh, but last year, the select board paid for a holiday party for all employees. I would like to continue that this year with the village paying for a portion of it as well. Do the village trustees want to just to be clear the the it didn't it wasn't a budgeted item it was what we it's not a budgeted it, it we contributed individually what are you talking for number i don't know we could give them up to what was it last year brian i don't remember was six hundred dollars for five employees so yeah just for there wasn't yeah, a family member that were allowed. It's still motion we split the cost of the party. It's out of your own pocket. It's not out of the budget. You're going out of my pocket. You're going out of my pocket. Out of your pocket last year. My to the fire department. Last year. I have no problem with the budget or putting it on the town. Or the town. <laughs> no, no problem what? Putting it on the town. <laughs> okay, so the village trustees are not contributing to the holiday party. No, I, I guess we pay fifty percent. So the holiday party cost for the village. <laughs> what? The village is paid for the Yeah, the village is paid for the Yeah. No, I think he was looking for a vote, wasn't he? He's just, just asking if you're interested. I don't think you need a vote. I, I don't need a vote. Individually, you don't need a vote. We're a, it's, not, it's not village money. You don't need to make a decision. Oh, perfect. Okay, now you can adjourn if you want. Okay. <laughs> I'm sure you want to adjourn. Second, we should show. Okay, you can be sure for the select course. The holiday party's not that bad. Thanks, Donna. You're.